everybody, welcome back to another episode of Creating a Quick Great Tone. And today I wanted to talk about one thing that I always do, or pretty much always do, when dialing in a chorus effect in any of my presets. Now, obviously, there is not just one way to use a chorus effect. Sometimes it can be used for some pretty zany out there sounds, some pretty cool sound design stuff. But I'm talking more just sort of the traditional, nice, shimmery chorus sound that we might use on a clean tone or even maybe on on some lead sound. So let's jump over to Helix Native and I'll show you the way that I dial in my chorus sounds and also let you in on a little pet peeve of mine when I hear some others use chorus sounds. So here I am in Helix Native. I've just set up a little preset based around the matchstick channel one. I have a little dab of reverb so it's not quite so dry and just my little compressor I normally put at the end and this little preset with uh, the chorus off here sounds like this. And I'm using my Vigier Expert uh, guitar uh, on the neck pickup for this. So, so that's what that little tone you're hearing is. Now, coming over to our chorus effect, I have just the normal Line 6 original chorus uh, in stereo. Uh, speed, depth, pre-delay, wave shape, tone, spread, uh, mix. I'm leaving the mix at 50%, the spread up at 10. I'm really only going to be focusing here on two of the controls that are going to be quite common to pretty much all chorus effects we might use. That is speed and depth. I'm gonna give you an example of one thing I hear a lot when some folks dial in chorus. That's a bit of a pet peeve of mine. It's something like this. Maybe not that dramatic, but. That out of tune warble we hear, now that grates on me. I, it always just feels like somebody's playing out of tune. Now, there are times where we, we might do silly things like this. Um, maybe we're trying to do like a John Schofield type of a tribute uh, tone or something along those lines where we get this kind of warbly special effect, or maybe we do want it for... Uh, you know, a dramatic effect. But for the most part, I find using a chorus like this, if we're just playing beautiful lush chords, you know, it, it really tends to just give the impression that we're out of tune. You might say, well, why is that? To really understand that, we have to understand what is going on with a chorus effect. So a chorus is basically a, as we know, a modulation effect. It's under our modulation setting here. So what it's doing is it's taking our original tone, our original sound, and it is blending it with an affected sound. So there's a low frequency oscillator that is oscillating a delay line and then blending that back in with our original part. And that gives this chorus effect we've come to know and love. And so the low frequency oscillator is going to do two things. It's going to move at a certain rate of speed. So it's going to alter that delay line either very quickly or very slowly, and that's set by the speed. And the depth is how extreme that delay setting is going to move. When we're moving that delay line very quickly, that's when we get these out of tune kind of sounds. And that's what basically a chorus is designed to do. It's designed to give us the sound of a choir singing, a whole bunch of people singing at the same time, and we're going to have these you know, human pitch inaccuracies and timing inaccuracies that give us this big, beautiful sound. But if it's dialed in incorrectly, and I, I'll say incorrectly, because there is no right and wrong, as I just pointed out, really it's going to be about what we desire as our final outcome. But if we do dial it in, in this sort of incorrect manner, then we could end up with problems and maybe a sound that we don't really want. Uh, and some folks may not know how to get rid of that. So one thing that I do is I like a very high depth on my chorus. But what I like to do is bring the rate of speed down considerably. So if I went to opposite extremes here, if I compare that with no chorus, So you'll notice that even though I have the depth set at 10, I still have a very subtle chorus. Now, as I bring that speed control up, you will notice a much more lush sound to it.
Mm-hmm. Now, right there around three, do you notice? You really start to hear those tuning, we'll call it issues, come in. So what happens if we go the opposite extreme, though, and go with a very high rate of speed with a low depth? I still hear a much more subtle version of the tuning problems, or again, problems. I'm calling them problems. But So I don't like this setting. I don't like the high speed setting with the low depth. I much prefer getting that depth and maybe starting off by going all the way up to 10 and then rolling that speed control in. And that's really going to allow us to control how much of that kind of out of tune sound we have. Now, again, I mean, if you really want to crank that up because that's an effect you're going for, then that's exactly what you should do. But for me, I find that a lot of times using a higher depth setting with a much lower speed setting is going to give me the effect that I'm usually looking for in a lot of situations. Now, a lot of folks will ask, should I use the note sync? I've done videos where, you know, I use note sync on delay all the time, and I really kind of recommend that it be used for most folks uh, for traditional kind of delay line situations. Uh, with note sync, I don't do that though, because if we end up in a situation where we say tap tempo up to a really high tempo, we're going to basically then force this speed control to go faster and maybe end up with some of those issues that I was just discussing. So a good way to do it is to bring your depth up to 10, bring your speed down to zero. Roll your speed control up to where you maybe start to hear some of those tuning anomalies that we talked about. And then from there, come into your depth and bring that down to taste. So what did you guys think? Did you find that helpful? I find that just as far as the controls, that rate and that depth, once we understand what's going on with them and what the effect of moving those to different extremes are, I think it's going to allow us the ability to dial our chorus in in a much more efficient manner and get us to our ultimate end goal a little bit quicker than if we just kind of keep moving these things around. The only reason I did this video is I've had questions about this before, but I've also listened to a lot of folks when they dial in a tone with a chorus sound. And one thing that quite often oftentimes I always notice is there's a very high or even medium high rate setting that's always maybe a little much for those tuning inconsistencies that I mean they're supposed to be there in a chorus to a certain degree but I find if we can get that under control a little bit more we can get a much nicer chorus effect that's going to work for more situations and might not give that sort of out of tune quality that I hear so often so I hope that was useful again take everything I say here with a grain of salt because I am not the keeper of the proper chorus settings everybody's going to have different desired results and different 
different situations that they're going to dial in for. So there is no right and wrong. But I thought I would put this out there just so folks do understand what those controls do, and then they'll be able to dial those in in hopefully a better manner for even the situation that they're trying to deal with. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope that was enjoyable. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some enjoyment or use out of watching it. And please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I will be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.